Okay, so, so here's what we want to do. We want to take the, the quotient rule and or the product rule, and we want to use those to come up with, we're going to add some derivatives to our list today. We have a pretty short list. Let, let's write down our list of known derivatives. What's, what do we know? We know sum, okay, we, we know the, I won't even write that one down. We know the derivative of a sum is just, we'll just differentiate term by term. We'll think of that more as a process than a, than a form. But we know, for example, the derivative with respect to x of what is some constant times x to the n. Cx n to the n minus 1. Good. We know the derivative, I guess I should have put this one first. I mean, I don't know if we need to write this one. What's the derivative of a constant? Okay, what's the derivative of x? Uh, so those, I mean, those two are, we don't really need those two. We know the derivative with respect to x of sine x is cosine. cosine. And we know the derivative with respect to x of cosine x is negative sine. negative sine x. Okay, so we know those specific derivatives. Then we know how to do derivatives of products and quotients. Okay, so what's the product rule? The derivative with respect to x of u times v, where u and v are functions of x, is what? u prime plus, plus v prime u prime. Plus, yeah, each time one of them is prime, isn't it? Okay, so we know the product rule and we know the quotient rule. Paige, what's the quotient rule? Um, no, I know this. Yeah, uh, V, D, or U Yeah, okay, prime good. There you go. Minus U, V prime over, over D squared. D squared. There you go. Okay, that's supposed to be, that looks like a U. But i got to change that. That's supposed to be a V. There. That's better. Okay. All right. So that's the sum total of what we know so far about differentiation. Those are the rules we know. So what we want to do today is we're going to use this guy and these guys to come up with the derivatives of the other four trig functions. At least we'll do one of them and then I'll give you the rest. Okay. So let's, let's take tangent. We want to be able to fill in this blank. The derivative with respect to x of tangent x equals. So what do you think? Sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. Good. So we could say tangent x is the quotient of sine x and cosine x. And so that is a quotient rule issue, right? So what's that tell us then? Very good, because we got low d high minus high d low. So low, whoops, we got low, low cosine x times d high. Derivative of sine is, okay, minus, yeah, sine. Sine x times derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x, okay? All over cosine squared. Okay, so this gives us on the top what? Said plus sine squared? Yeah. Yes. Plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. Well, what is our trig identity there? What's cosine squared x plus sine squared x? What is it? It's 1. Yeah. How do you remember that? 
remember that because it's really just a unit circle issue, right? If I've got a circle, a unit circle, okay, if I've got a unit circle, and let's say that I've taken this angle theta right here, right? Well, then what are the coordinates of that point? So this is unit circles, so that's one and that's one, right? What are, what are the coordinates of a point on the unit circle? If that's angle theta. The x coordinate is? I didn't tell you what theta was, but just in terms of theta in general. Cos cosine. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. Sine theta, right? Okay. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So then, if I draw a right triangle, what's the length of what's the length of this side of the right triangle right there? Isn't that the same as the x coordinate? Everybody agree? Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's just cosine theta. Isn't that the same as the y coordinate? Yeah. So what's that tell you if that's a right triangle? Plus sine squared equals one. Plus sine squared equals one. Right? Okay. So then we could rewrite this as one over cosine squared x, right? Which is, and this is kind of an unnecessary step, but that, would you agree that's the same thing as 1 over cosine x squared? Well, what is 1 over cosine x? No, secant, yeah. So that looks like secant x squared, which we would just write as secant squared x. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so then we can fill in the blank. So the derivative with respect to x of tangent x equals secant squared x. Okay. Um, we really can't, it's much more convenient to derive the derivatives of secant and therefore cosecant x using the chain rule, which we haven't learned yet. So I'm going to put that one off. But I, but I am going to tell you what the answers are to. So if we, if we make a list of all the trig derivatives, here's how you can divide them up. So we've got the derivative with respect to x of sine x equals cosine x. We just learned that the derivative with respect to x of tangent x equals secant squared x, right? I'm going to tell you this. The derivative with respect to x of secant x equals secant x tangent x. Let's see if you can fill in the rest of these just by finding a pattern. The derivative with respect to x of cosine x equals negative sine x. What do you think the derivative with respect to x of cotangent x equals? Ah, it's going to be negative cosecant squared x. What do you think the derivative with respect to x of cosecant x is going to equal? Negative cosecant squared. Negative cosecant x cotangent x. So here's how you can easily organize these patterns in your brain, right? You know that if you're going to take the derivative of the quote unquote regular trig functions, the non-co-trig functions, you always get positive results. Now you have to remember those, but if you know those three derivatives, 
The derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and the derivative of secant is secant tangent, then you automatically get the other three for free because they're going to follow the same patterns. But the derivative of the co-functions always give you a negative result, and they give you the cousin functions. So cosine goes with sine, secant goes with cosecant, secant tangent goes with cosecant cotangent. Okay? And you got it. Okay, so there's, there's one thing. So let's just try maybe one quick example like that. So what if you had... Um, Okay, what if you had something like this? use the quotient rule, what's that going to give me? Okay, low times d high. What's d high? Right, derivative of, we get zero. It would be negative sine Well, but I'm going to have, a, but I have a minus in front. Right? Can we see that? I take the derivative of the top, I'm going to get minus negative sine x is positive sine x. Okay, keep going. Minus 1 minus cosine x times cosine. Good. All right, so d low, which is cosine x, all over. Okay, and then I can simplify that. That's going to give me sine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. Everybody agree? See that? Good point. So if I distribute the cosine and the negative 1, I'm going to get a minus cosine x and then a plus cosine squared. So how can I simplify that result? What, what's this equal to right here? 1. 1. Okay. So that's going to give me 1 minus cosine x over sine squared x. Could I write that, and that's fine, could I write that in terms of composite trig functions? What if I split my denominator? So I get 1 over, I'm going to get 1 over sine squared x, which is cosecant, good, cosecant squared x minus cosine over sine squared. What's that? Let, let, me, go, let me write this out. I think that's important. Maybe I actually write the steps out. So we're going to get 1 over sine squared x minus cosine x over sine squared x, right? Okay, how can I divide this one? Up? So sine, x, sine squared x is just sine x times sine x, and I can regroup these. Okay, good. So I could write this as 
cosecant squared x minus. Now, if I take this one and let's group this guy as cosine x over sine x times 1 over sine x. What's cosine over sine x? So that's our answer. Could we have gone a different route with this? Could you, what do you, think? you just done that bottom part at the very beginning? It started with one over sine yeah. x. Okay. Sine what sine if? Okay. Good. So that this was using the quotient rule. All this stuff, everything down here, is quotient rule, right? What if we pre-wrote this though? What if, what if we, what Seth's suggesting is, what if we split this from the beginning and I wrote this as one over sine x, which is cosecant x minus cosine over sine. Okay, now what happens if I differentiate that? What's the derivative of cosecant x? Derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent, right? That's a new one we just added. So we're going to get negative cosecant x cotangent x. Derivative of cotangent? Negative cosecant squared. So I've got a negative out front, which makes it positive, right? Well, that's pretty quick, isn't it? Right? Okay. So you see the advantage to pre-writing that. We can avoid a lot of work. Okay? Okay. All right, so what about then one last thing? And then I'll probably call it a day. There's one other thing I definitely want to do before, before we test. So I want to go through a couple big problems where I'm showing you guys how to simplify the result. Yeah, let's, let's do one of those. I just feel like this is something we're going to... Let's do one of these. Let's do something like... Yeah, rather... Okay, I'm going to do the call a little off. Let's do one of these. How about something like this? What if we had... We'll do a product real one today. Take so long. So let's do, what if we had f of x equals uh, x minus 3 to the fourth times x squared plus 2x minus 4 to the fifth. And I want to differentiate that. Obviously, this is one where we do not want to probably go through the hassle of expanding that whole thing out first. That's too much work. Right? So we're just going to use the, the product rule. So what's that going to give us? Oh, you know what? Ah, you know what? I don't want to do this one. This is going to be... I'm going to hold off on this. I'm going to hold off on this. This is going to be I'm jumping the gun just a little bit on that. I, I gotta wait till after we do do chain rule. It'll make it. I think it's gonna be better. It's gonna be better. We don't. You don't have any really tough ones of that anyway on this assignment. So I'm, not, I'm just not gonna sweat that one. Okay, one last thing. This will be it, and then I'm done. So what if we have y equals something like tangent x? What's y prime? Okay, so uh, what if I wanted to do something like y equals uh, what if I want to do oh, I'm just going to show you why we're stuck here. What if I want to do y double prime? 
I'd have to differentiate this, wouldn't I? Right. Well, what are my options for that right now? I've got a composition of functions here, don't I? If I rewrite this, if I rewrite this in a form where we can see the composition better, it's oftentimes, we've talked about this before, it's oftentimes good to pull that square outside of the function. So I could write this as secant x quantity squared. Okay, that's hard for us to differentiate. What's our only way we could approach that right now? A product, right? We would have to write this as a product of secant x times secant x. But what if that had been like, what if we'd had something like secant to the fifth? That's a horrible way to approach this. You have to write it as a product of five things. That's a lot of time. Okay, wouldn't it be nice if we could think of this as a composition of a power outside and a secant inside? Okay. I'm not going to give you any problems like this to do because that's coming up. That's 2.4. That's the chain rule. So you can see the motivation for the chain rule is going to make everything way easier. And, and we'll talk a lot more about it when we get there. But it's going to take a problem that would otherwise be kind of arduous to do, having to write it as a product. And it's going to allow us to just do derivatives of compositions of functions. Okay. What are some ones we can do right now, though? What about this? What if I have something like y equals 4x to the fifth minus 3x cubed plus 12? What's y prime? That's a pretty quick one. Minus, okay, what's y double prime? What's that mean? The derivative of the derivative. Okay, good. So that's going to be Okay, how about y triple prime? You get the idea. 240x squared minus 18. That means, if I put it in parentheses like that, it means a derivative. So that's a fourth derivative. Period. Right? So higher derivatives are just derivatives of derivatives, right? So the notation is a little bizarre for this. Like if we want to do, this is if we use prime notation. What do you think we would do if we say something like f of x equals blah, blah, blah? If I want to take a derivative, that's just f prime of x, right? Right? f double prime. When I get all the way down here, I would say something like f to the, if I'm taking a fifth derivative, I could write it like this. Everybody see that? That would be a fifth derivative using this notation, using the f of x notation. That's how we mean a higher order derivative. Okay, what about if we're doing this? Like if I've got dy dx is my first derivative, well, something. How do you suppose I use, this is what's bizarre, how do you suppose I use a, how, what's my notation for doing another derivative? Well, it's bizarre. It's d squared y over dx squared. That's how, which is really bizarre, but that's how you'd indicate a second derivative using the quotient form of the derivative notation. Okay, what's that really mean? It just means the derivative with respect to x of dy dx. And you can kind of see how maybe people get this notation then, because it looks like you've got a d times a d, which looks like a d squared on the bottom. You've got a dx times a dx. But that's, that, that, that's weird. If you see that, I don't want you to say, what does that mean? This is just our weird notation for a second derivative. 
that makes sense, but they're not hard to do. We will come back to revisit this again in a physics con context, and we'll look at some kinematic stuff, but I'm going to hold off on that one. Okay, that's it. That's it. You guys are you guys are good to go. Pretty much anything. Else. So let's set a date for doing this. Would tomorrow is too soon? Obviously, I think. Um, what about like next? Early next week. Yeah. That sound good. Give you a chance to kind of wrap up these assignments over the weekend. Yeah. Okay. All right. That works for me.